Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 123, 123 on 314, which means it is Pi Day. It's one of Bob's favorite holidays, I think, is Pi Day. It's, it's a big part of my religion, yes. Yeah, 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 that whole Star Trek religion. Anyway, um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't here with us right here, right now. Um, special announcement on Pi Day that I should have got a into the meeting notes before we got here, but that's okay because we're going to talk about it right now. Um, we've got a full agenda today, fuller than usual. Um, we already announced Pi Day, but on Pi Day I want to also uh, discuss uh, V314, which we've been talking about for a while, but let's talk about what it is in detail, get it out there so that people know it's coming. Uh, then we'll talk about Wix 311 status, RC status, um, just to kind of poke at it because then we'll do all the triage stuff and after we do triage we'll talk about the release 311 release date because I don't think talking about the release date during the status before we do the triage makes any sense. Hopefully that makes sense. So we have a full set of things. Uh, I'm going to keep rolling right into Wix 314. Wix 314 is the next release after 311. I know we can't count but we couldn't pass off the opportunity to have 314 especially if I could announce it on 314. The big thing about 3.14 is that it's the last 3x release. We're not going to be doing any more works in 3x. 3x is done. Uh, we have 4.0, and we need to go focus on getting 4.0 done, um, shipped, doing things in 4x. There's all kinds of cool stuff in 4x. It's a better platform. It allows us to do a bunch of breaking changes and clean stuff up. So you might wonder why I bother with 3.14 at all. Well, 3.14 is where we will put fixes as we need them, as we do work in 4.0, to make it easier for people to move from 3x to 4.0. So because there are breaking changes in 4.0, we will write, we will update Wixcop, and we've been doing it okay, um, to help migrate code from 3x to 4.0. But there are a lot of other things that could be broken um, that are harder to catch by a Wixcop or otherwise just difficult. So we'll be able to go into 3.14 and add and change things in 3.14 to help people understand here. If you want to move to 4, try taking your Wix 3 code base to 3x. You'll have a smaller set of potentially breaking changes that you'll need to address. But should you address those, then coming over to 4.0 will be much, much easier. Basically, it's a stepping stone to clean up any of your 3x stuff that may have been dangling around that doesn't match the way we want to do things at 4.0, and then you can deal with all the code migration, which you may have a lot of. Um, we didn't do this in 2, but uh, given the extent to which we use MS Build and things like that, I'm expecting that. And we've done some big changes to 4's MS Build. For example, it uses comma targets. Um, things like that uh, we will do stuff in 3.14 to help it easier to get through any of that kind of stuff. One of the big changes in 3.14, for example, will be we will be dropping support for the .NET Framework 2 and MS Build 3.5 um, so that people can go, oh, I guess I can't use MS Build 3.5 when I go to 4. And it'll be very clear there um, what's going on. At least when you go 3.14, there'll be a, a narrower, hopefully narrower set of fixes you have to do. 3.14 will start immediately after we finish 3.11. Um, there will be no specific set of things that go into 3.14. It will be, well, we need this to make it easier to go 3.14. Um, also means that we're not going to be taking a lot of other stuff in 3.14. Um, I'm sure we'll have an ongoing discussion of, oh, this is a really bad bug in 3x. We really should fix it in 3.14. And we'll have those discussions. But that is not the purpose of 3.14. Um, if you're going to write code, you should go write against 4. Um, we're not going to be backporting fixes. We're not going to be double fixing fixes because, as we've seen in 3.11, that's just sucking up a lot of time. I don't know about you, Bob, but I've had to fix a couple bugs double, and it's just, uh, it's not just annoying. It's its annoying. <laughs> it's, well, it's for me, they stay on the to-do list for too long. Yeah. Um, so I want to get around to that. Yeah. We, we just, we need to stop doing it. So the... Wix 3.14 will not be taking bug fixes. That's not its purpose. Its purpose is uh, to take fixes that make it easier to get to 3.14 to help you get from 3x to 3.14. Um, and 3.14 will end around v4's RTM. Presumably, we will have all of the fixes we need by that point, and it will be done there. 
And if we don't, then we can do a couple extra 314 builds afterwards to, as if we find more things to add to 314 that help you migrate to 4. Um, I'm not really particular about the 314 release date, um, but it will just be, you know, it'll be a fix, a fix, a fix. Uh, one of the things I'd like to consider about 314, and we'll talk about this more, especially when we start having some fixes in 314, is um, if we can't just do continuous delivery. We're like, yeah, the latest build of 314 is always better than the last build, and because it only has small fixes that help you migrate from 3x to 4, that, uh, you know, you could pick up any 314 build and it should be just fine, because it's not like there's feature work going on in there. Um, so the the goal of this, of course, is that we will uh, be able to focus our time on 4, which needs our focus, otherwise we are never going to get 4 done. Um, and also to help people get from 3x to, to v4, since I expect there's going to be things that we're going to find that don't work. Uh, this just need a little bit extra hand-holding that we may be able to put in really nice error messages in 3.14 and things like that. All right. So that's the 314 announcement. That's what we're going to do with the Pi release. Um, I'm sure Bob is going to refer to it as the Pi release in every opportunity he gets. Seems likely. Seems likely. Um, and uh, it will be done when V4 is done. I see people are kind of typing some things like they're very interested in having something, but they're writing a book, which means it takes a while before it actually comes out. So I'm just going to take a breath, let everybody let this sink in. Um, this does mean that 3.11 is the end of 3x. You know, yeah, We've been kind of working our way there. The bug fix has been getting smaller and smaller. There's a lot of good stuff in 4. We need to go move our way there. Um, plus the number of changes we're making in 4 that um, we've kind of discussed around the edges that I think will make 4 uh, easier for us to work on as well, which will help hopefully improve the velocity of the project as a whole. All right, so let's talk about what we're doing right now. 3.11, how's 3.11 going? Um, it's actually looking pretty good. Um, I, I didn't get a bug open on the one issue that's probably the biggest around the MS Build and uh, Visual Studio integration. We have found issues. I think John hit it. Um, some I think may have opened a bug just now about it, that if you install the Wix build tools, MS Build 15 does not work with them. Um, we actually have an issue out with the MS Build team because the design they came up with breaks us. Um, we are broken. Um, and we're hoping they come back with a better answer. We have a workaround um, a design, but it requires people to manually go fix their project files, which is not a great solution. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But that's like the one bug I know that's not tracked. That's probably the biggest issue that is blocking 3.11's great integration with Visual Studio 2017. Um, otherwise, we fixed a few Visual Studio 2017 issues between the RC, between the preview release and the RC, which was only a few days. So it was really great that people kicked the tires really fast. That was awesome. Thank you. Um, and we've had like over 2,000 downloads of the vote of 2017. So, you know, in a week, which it has been exactly a week, woohoo! Um, it was, uh, you know, that's not bad. 2,000 downloads in a, in a week isn't too bad. So, good amount of kicking tires, especially for the few number, relatively few number of bugs we've had. But we're going to go through the issues and the pull request today to see what's left, um, what we want to take left in 3.11, and then um, and after we do those triage of today, we will talk about when we're actually going to finish releasing 3.11. Are we on target? Things like that. So overall, 3.11, very, very cool. And thank you, those of you here that have always take the time to go grab a build and run it through the paces. Really do always appreciate that. All right, moving forward. Triage. Bob, you ready? I am set. OK. I just figured we'd start with issues, because we always start with the issues. And we have 15 of them this time. Um, but a few, yeah, 15 are open and five are closed. So we got 20 things to work our way through here. And some of these are really old. A couple of these are old. All right, anyway. Let's just jump into it. Uh, I think Visual Studio responded. Yes, Visual Studio said they, yeah, custom logger, when we do that, hanging sometimes. But they didn't tell us why. Yeah. And it appears is deadlocking. So that's not really helpful. 3.10.1. 
well, they need to get on the 3.10.3 at the least. Um, but I don't think it's going to change anything. Um, so we have to go back and tell them why, <laughs> or more, or something. Uh, right, char is deadlocking. I guess we could go look at that. Um, this is 3x, so are we taking this? Or do we just push this to 4? Well, I mean, it's <laughs> we, we don't yet have an actionable bug, and there is a workaround. So, so this is going to 4. <laughs> yeah, I no, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yep. I would take this, you know, I wouldn't stop 3.11 from shipping based yeah. on this. No, because there's the workaround, just pass the property, you know, pull everything out of property. Yeah, if, if there were no workaround, then sure, that would be different, but. Yep. Okay, uh, so we need to push back on this to say, but why, or something? Okay. I guess we need to go look at that line of code in the right and give it to them and say, so what in this would be hanging your system? Right? Right. Okay. So something about our call hangs their custom logger. So we, our code is public. I don't know what theirs is. So we can send our code to them and say, here, this is what it does. <laughs> um, what's wrong with that? Or what's wrong with your logger that's unhappy about that? And then one of us can take a fix, I suppose. Yes? Uh, seems reasonable. All right. So I guess we're we'll going to have to respond to that. Okay. This melt thing just keeps going. Where are we at with this? Well, I think where we're at is... Oh, two percent still here. Uh, I don't understand the problem exactly, um, but the fact that Pyro is uh, concerned about... The, the merge module itself seems a little odd. Um, I could be wrong about that, but it seems odd to me that uh, that, that is looking. I, I don't know if it's just a generic thing. It's an object field, and yeah. it's you know it wants something, but um, so we put it in four X, and someone keeps looking at it. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have another. I don't have another solution. All right. I mean, that's what we do here, right? All right. Cool. Yeah, it's a melt. Yeah, yeah. Someone needs to go dig into it. Not a problem. Yep. Um, I'm mostly looking for like 311 stuff. Otherwise, hey, it goes in 4x, and someone can yeah, take a fix for it. Where we're at. Uh, does not give appropriate error message if MBA prereq does not point to a package. Yeah, I thought we had another one like this, but this is a uh, because we use. Because we don't use an extension, we don't create the reference between these things, right? It's just a property. Yeah. Well, it's just a property, and there's no, uh, you know, MBA. The prereq portion of Rick standard BA is just going. Nope, that's not the package. Nope, that's not the package. It, you know, obviously doesn't understand the concept of typos. Yep. Um, so. Um, I agree. We should try to. Someone could totally make that better. I mean, toss it four. Yep. That's not great. Um, da, 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 da. I don't know why it scrolled up so high. On execute, begin in that. This is a typo? Oh, great. Four. Wrong reference there. Yeah, let's toss this in four. Four O. It's a typo. There's some documentation that we can fix that. Oh, I see. The comment does not match the function name. It's not exact documentation, but I guess it's documentation. Cool. We can fix that. Wow, well, all the source code is documentation. Yes, you're right. Um, all right. We have like three of these, I think. Resolve Wix references cannot be loaded from 3.5. Yeah. Ah, no, this is 3.5. Yay, this is a discussion about 3.5. .NET for 3.5. MS Build 3.5. Yes, we still need that for the Wix targets, some of the Wix targets to work. So, yay. Uh, this is resolved now, right? He's happy. Yeah, sorry. I I, I think I was wanting to close it uh, because... Yep, not a problem. So It's not a bug. It's yep, so put it 311, label it, all good. 
Although we're going to come back to that discussion here in a bit. Right. Uh, man. Update icons. Current icons are very old and not modern. Please update and unify them with the Visual Studio 2017. Yeah. <laughs> As I said, I'd love it if somebody did that. I agree. They're a little bit bright for Visual Studio 2012 and beyond. Um, but, okay. So we could toss this a 4X and someone can come along and create better icons for us. Or we could close it and go, yeah, that's great. If someone wants to do that, they can. I don't know. Thoughts? Not terribly interested in keeping it open myself. Me either. So let's just close it and say, yeah, we'd love for somebody to do that. But keeping a bug tracking that isn't going to do us any good. Right? Works for me. I don't think we need a bug tracking. Hey, here's someone. Someone did the work to create new icons for us. All right. Wix build tool installer should point to the marketplace, which is probably true. So somewhere if we could have in the BA that points to the... Um, someone... Well... Jacob brings up the whole art, no artists, and someone Microsoft would have better paint <laughs> art skills than MS Paint. The only thing is that the current Wix, the last time the Wix tools got a update to their icons, it was actually Microsoft that provided them. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's hard. Um, and it was really well, great that they did. Because they were back, trying to ship back it then. in Rosario. Is that what it was called? No. What was it called? Oh, man. Would be, it, was be, it, was be, it, was be, it was the R one between Would Be and. Was it? Was it Rosario? Yeah, it was no. Rosario. The thing that never shipped. Yeah. Yeah, it was Rosario. Anyway. Is that is that, a, is that an island? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. Is it not Rosario? It started with an with an. It island. did. It did. It was... Oh, man. That's going to bug me. Um, anyway, at the time, those were perfectly, you know, lovely icons. Oh, well, yeah, they're you great. Know, they were they're fantastic. You know, and now they need to be black and white and flat, or right. mostly black and white and flat. Anyway, anyway, yeah, it would be great. I don't want to do that, um, but that's not my skill set. All right, so Wix 3.11. Uh, this one, are we taking this to 3.11? I think it would be great. It would be awesome if the BA said at the end, hey, you installed this via the UI. You probably want the Visual Studio extensions. Um, someone going to figure out how to put that in the WPF UI? I know Jacob's done some work there. Oh, we don't have a Phil today. He's done some WPF work. Um, Bob, you want to learn MPF, right? Um, or WPF? M MPF? I don't want to learn MPF. <laughs> WPF? Really WPF. Um, though, annoyingly, I have been working in WPF lately. Um, I'm not sure. I think we should you know, maybe briefly discuss how it should look. Um, <laughs> good? Semi-good? Thank good? you. Um, <laughs> I don't have a lot of opinions. Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I don't know if this is just, you know, we throw it up in another in another row in the UI. Um, it it wouldn't hurt to keep it up, like all the time. I just change the complete uh, bar to a to a, a link that. Look, if someone wanted to do the UI for WPF, I would do the web page to create a landing page for this. So if you want to change the complete bar to a, you know, get Visual Studio tools that took you to a single page on wixtoolset.org, I would do the page on wixtoolset.org for that. I can do the WPF if no one else wants to. All right, so are we taking this for 3.11? Uh, I'm glad you showed up, Sean. Um, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I, I think we should definitely do this in 3.11. Okay, then we have some people voted for it, so let's put it in 3.11. Who wants it? Right, did Sean say enough words to get it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's that or Jacob, right? But John said he did too, but he doesn't have May. Yeah, May is going to be a little bit late. Um, so, all right. I think Sean just got tagged with it. We'll see where it goes. Um, and have a discussion. You guys can have a discussion after meeting or whatever. It's just we have a lot of other things to cover, and I don't want to get too stuck on designing UI here. Yep. Okay. Agreed. All right. Oh, well, that'll be nice. That'll be a that'll close the loop on our user experience there. Manage bootstrapper crashes when on detect compatible um, is evoked. Yes, and Sean already took this. He tried to slip it in the RC and missed by I don't know what do we tie three minutes. Um, yeah, I think that's right. 
Yeah, all right. Uh, let's give it a label, and it's already in the right milestone, so that's going the right direction. Is this in, Sean? I don't think anyone merged it yet. Okay. So it's not checked in yet, but it will be as soon as we get around to it, and then we'll do another build. Um, or we'll, just, we'll talk about that. When are we doing the next build? We'll talk about that in a minute. But we have this fix waiting. Cool. Very cool. All right, I've lost it. All right. Adding a project reference should add skeleton element. Votive. Cool. This thing going for? Yeah, this would be cool. So I'm going to do all the work in Votive to do all that. Going for and <laughs> Votive. All right. Read registry cannot be loaded from Wix assembly test. So this was one of the three, or the first of the three. Yep. All right. This is the first of the three, I think, where we found a problem with the Wix CA targets right before RC. I remember this. Spent all day on the RC just trying to fix this problem. Oh, it's so bad. Really want to throttle the Visual Studio people right now. Um, or the MS Build people. I, you know. Same thing. Uh, fine. It's like the, I was trying to narrow it down to not all of them, right? Because you know the people that work on JavaScript. I have no beef with them. I don't use their tooling. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So we got this fix into the RC, so we can give this the correct label and, and move on. Um, and we'll talk about. There's another bug coming up that we'll talk about. The problem that's still there. Install, validate, hang. I believe we decided that this was fixed. Yes. So that's fixed. This needs to be declared. Um, VS 2017, this is a duplicate, right? When I start this, it does not give that. Fixed in that. Yep. So let's go ahead and resolve that as a duplicate. Toss it 311. Oh, we're flying through some of these bugs. Don't worry about these. Oh, yes! The tool settings under properties page. Um, let's toss this in 311. You can give it to me. Um, in the rename, broke some of the ties that are our string characters between the resx file and the code um, and and totally did not go to this tab because it's actually it's kind of cool it's invisible <laughs> this tab is different it's still there you can click on it you just can't see it <laughs> and it doesn't work well at all as you might imagine being invisible and all those kind of things so this can go 311 and give it to me and I'll make sure this gets done before the end of 311 .NET 452 this is an empty bug. Oh. Uh, this is going to the Wix users, right? All right, cool. So this is yeah. There were two closed. two things, two things then. Yeah, all right, cool. Bootstrapper error type missing apply. Really? Oh, the error type. Okay. Doesn't have a nicely defined name. Um, and we want to try to take this in three eleven. Should be a really small fix, right? adding the last error type to this thing. On the other hand, it's been this way forever? Yeah, probably. If we don't take it, uh, that's what I'm asking. If someone wants to take it in 311, we could sneak it in and have it. Otherwise, we're going to toss it in 4. Sure, I'll take it. Sean has done these little things. <laughs> Unable to create internet shortcut with this. Yes. It seems to be that changes. Bob, you said something about this. Yeah. Um this uh we yeah, we took this, this feature in. Someone uh opened a pull request to add the icon to internet shortcuts. Long, long request requested the feature. Um unfortunately when I did the pull request review I missed the fact that um it was not an optional thing or wasn't correctly authored to be optional. Um, so um, I have uh, implemented a fix, and I just need to test it before I can send out a pull request to cool. do right, that. So it worked. It just broke backwards compatibility. Okay. Well, no, it didn't actually work either, but it definitely broke backward compatibility. It didn't work either. Well, that's discouraging. The feature... The feature um, didn't actually add the, the icon. Oh. Everything else sh should still have worked, but it didn't actually add the icon. All right. So we're taking this to 311 because you have a fix. Uh, at the very least, it. yes. I need to. Uh, cool. Uh, I can back it out, worst case, but I would like to try to fix it and get it in there. All right. So 
three eleven. I will take it. We're gonna go roll with that. Um, I'm gonna come back to this three five prerequisite. I'm gonna discuss this one. Um, uh, or do I? These other ones aren't any better. Never mind. We're just gonna keep going. I'm not gonna skip it. Um, so this guy pointed out that we now check for the three five framework. Um, and he's saying, hey, look, you can hack the installer by, you know, manually adding this DLL, which is fine if you want to go mess with your own machine. Um, well, there, there are two things. One is there's the hack to get past the check in the installer. And then the other thing is, oh, yeah, you have to actually install something to make the code work. So uh, there's the, you know, yeah, you can, you can bypass the installer check. Yes. Uh, but it's not going to work. All right, so that was the thing that got me confused. I was like, these guys are arguing they want it. Like, this is where I got to. The guy was like, I think it works for everyone and is a known issue. Like, I don't understand what that means. It's like, many, like I know a lot of people aren't installing 3.5 anymore, but you still need it, right? Yeah. This, okay. If you use MS Build... Okay, so right. this is this is the problem, right? The the Wix tasks DLL yes, has a so reference to MS Build 2.0, to right, an yeah. MS Build 2.0 assembly. Okay, so, so that's if you don't have 2.0 installed, you ain't running a Wix task. Right. So the only question then is, should we remove this check, go back to the behavior um, where we knew we were broken, <laughs> right? But if you didn't have to use MS Build, everything worked. Um, I, I'm I'm trying to motivate the reason why we would back out the check that we've added. My vote is no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we, we've seen the result when yeah when we get it's bugs broken. that say hey this yeah. doesn't work and you're like yeah because work. you need this and yeah our installer yep. should have had the should have checked and we missed the check before and so on and so forth but. Okay, so, all right. I was trying to somehow say maybe we shouldn't take this, or maybe we should take the check out, but it seems like everybody else is like, no, no, the check is correct. All right, this is correct. What we're doing is correct. It's just they they were <laughs> they were going to need it anyway, right? <laughs> like whether they found out via our check up front or whether they found out later that they needed three five. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Via now, a really the, bad error message. Well, what would have been cool is if. You know, we could actually make 2.0 optional. But I don't see a way of doing that easily, and certainly not in something I would, you know, consider for 3.11 at this point. Yeah, so it's not a 3.11 thing. And, and as everybody points out, 3.14 is going to make this problem go away, because 3.14 will move to 4 only. Because 4.0 has moved to 4 only, so it helps you do that migration, and has a nice side effect of, hey, it avoids this problem. Okay. Um, fine. So I think it works for everyone as a known issue. So basically we're saying that Blake, I'm not going to try to say his last name. Um, I'm not even sure how you say that. I'm really bad at complicated names, though. Or If I can't sound it out, name issues? I don't know. Anyway, um, sorry. <laughs> uh, basically he's saying, I think it works for everybody as a known issue. Is I don't know what that means, but... Uh, it, it means that, yeah, everybody knows that you have to install 3.5. Okay. But I don't think people are installing 3.5, which is, must be wrong, because they must be if they're using Wix and MS Build. Right. The way I read it was that people have already run into that we need 3.5, and they've already figured out how to hack around it. Oh. well, This is the first really time I've seen someone recommend, you know, installing... One file. The... This, well, GAC, yeah, putting putting one file into the GAC. I've never seen that before. I would don't know that I would have it would have occurred to me. Um, no, <laughs> never would have occurred like, to me because like you don't, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. But I and see people all over going. I copied all the Wix into this random directory in Visual Studio, and it worked. <laughs> and, uh -oh. oh, then it broke yeah. Wix later when you guys installed in the correct place, and then it didn't work. I'm like, well, don't go hand hacking things. So. Well, yeah, I've seen that. A uh, bunch of Stack Overflow questions and answers about how you get voted working in Visual Studio 2017, for example. Yes. 
So yeah, there's that. So the the one thing that Jacob and John are bringing up is adding a opt out of this check, so you could bypass it if for some reason you don't use MS Build, but you install everything. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to add a bypass. We could change it from a you know from an OK message to you know yes. OK, no. ignore. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, retry. What was it? Abort, retry, ignore. <laughs> retry, fail. Yes. Yeah. No, I want to ignore. Which one's it? Retry or can't? Whatever which one it is. You're uh, right. Um. All right. Uh. So, how about that option? Allowing you to skip the warning. I assume this yeah. is in the Wix BA. Yes. Uh. So I want to give Blake that option. I guess we could. Say no. Um, and give him the option to say, hey, but if you wanted to go do the work to um, to implement this check, we or the bypass of allowing you to ignore, we would take that fix at this time. Is that what I'm hearing? Nobody here. I don't know. I mean, I look at I, I, again. Not completely sure I understand what. What Blake or um, the other person whose name I can't deduce from his Demidov seventy one GitHub handle, um, which he also doesn't put in his profile. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know that either of them is is you know strongly suggesting an actual change of behavior. They have a workaround if they don't want to install .NET 3.5. Um, but you know, fine. If someone, if you're that allergic to it, hey, feel free. It works apparently. So, you know, uh, obviously, it's not the kind of thing. You know, we can't redistribute. Part no. And let's build 2.0. <laughs> so no. that's not an option for us to automate. Um, Copy local. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't look like. Blake is all that concerned, um, but if currently we say, "Look, you got to do it," I don't know that that's wrong. You know, the alternative is, okay, you can possibly get away with this, but it will require hacking or. Or don't use the don't function. Won't work. Or well, yeah. Or don't use MS Build. Yeah. Or Votive. Or you know, it's just like really. No, no. Votive is fine. No, Votive's not fine. Votive uses MS Build. Well, sorry. <laughs> okay, that's just Votive is fine. It's it's completely on its own <laughs> at that point. <laughs> well, no. The reason I mentioned Votive is that some people might not it might not sink in that you know. Oh, I don't use MS Build integration. I'm using Visual Studio. But oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, it's, be, I think that'd I be a great learning experience for them. But yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I don't use MS Build. I use Visual Studio. Well, you're meaner than I am. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not completely opposed to it, but it's just like you know, this is. I don't know. I guess I'd I'd almost rather make a switch. Uh, but that's not going to be discoverable. I just, yeah, this yeah. is like a security question in an app. Yeah, you know, right. the correct answer is I'm going to click the button that lets me continue right. it. Right. And if you have okay. a button, you have to have the command line switch. So if you do it silently. Um, oh. Yeah, that's unpleasant. Um. So yeah, no, we're not doing this, right? I think that's kind of you've convinced me. It's just like yeah, no, I was trying, but I just can't. It doesn't work, and we'll fix it in 3.14. They can move to 3.14 in two months. We apologize for maintaining backward compatibility. I, I don't apologize. <laughs> it is the, That's why we're doing it. Now, you can argue that our backward compatibility is a little draconian here because we don't support Visual Studio anymore that supports this MS build. Because <sighs> Visual Studio 4... Ten, oh, yeah, that's 2010 true. 2010 supports true. MS build 4, so we're supporting basically Visual Studio 2008 and things like that. But we do yeah. support MS Build 3.5, which is what we're saying here. Yeah, 
yeah. which is what we've said. So you can, anyway. All right. All right. So the original opener also agreed with me in the end anyway. He's like, I agree. They're doing the right thing. The workaround is this hack that I came up with, and I'm very creative. And I'm like, you be, go you go be creative and let Microsoft yell at you. And, and I'm glad he at least listed to remove the reg keys after he added them to get by the check. Yeah, that could, that could be <laughs> Because otherwise, yeah. you start getting patches for 3.11. I don't know. Right, right. All right. Uh, no, this, this is not happening. Cool. Carry on. Um... I don't understand this issue. Something about heat not working in Visual Studio 2017 that did work in 2013. Uh, the environment variable should work. Nothing should be break that. I don't know if these other variables are hosed or whatever, but um, <laughs> there's no differences in heat being executed between those two MS builds. So I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, he, it also happens at 3.10.3. So this is probably more of an MS build 15 behavior change then. Mm, that's interesting. Or that might be an interesting investigation from the command line. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's a 3.10.3. I, we're not going to hold 3.11 for this, right? Well, it sounds like it's not in Wix, it's in Votive. Yeah, well, you never know. We might well, take a fix in Wix to support. I know, that's the problem, right? Yes, 2017 sometimes. Um, Votive is picking up... Sorry. Huh? I don't think this is Votive. Votive. Actually, Actually sorry, I was thinking Vo the, the Visual Studio extension V6 installs just redirects, right? Yeah. Time is built. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's probably not... Probably. No, it's also not clear why. It, no, the command works. He's just saying the SRD doesn't. Well, so I guess that my question is, how is it possible that something could be, you know, uh, I don't know, different? Actually, yeah, you know I, what? You know, he just give us the command, lo the logging. Hold on, hold on. Things. Look, if if he if he cut and paste. Cut and pasted correctly. Notice that SRD has a hyphen instead of a dash. Oh, could this be the th a thing in the, the command line options? Oh my gosh! Wow, look at Bob pulling out ancient history of the, hey. the hyphen checking code or whatever. Yeah, remember that? And that but I know my typography. Damn it. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. All right, let's send that to him. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I think Bob found it, because there's nothing else to describe that, and that's, like, the biggest change. Did you just copy and paste it, John? All right, cool. So probably name is build 15 difference. Yay. Thank goodness, because that made no sense to me at all. All right, Visual 2017 build tools plus Wix project. Now... Why do people keep uh, deleting our template? Anyway, build tools yes. 2017 RC. When I build uh, on a remote, I get this error. Uh, user end crunch. Oh, okay. Um, yes, read registry. Wait, isn't this the same as the? This is the Wix CA targets, no. right? No, this is the one that I brought up. Uh, so uh, this is the, if you don't have Votive installed, it doesn't work. Yep. Yep. You notice he never mentions Votive. Yeah. He gets... Uh, I installed build tools for this. Yeah. Yeah. Build tools was the confusing part. But this is the thing From that I mentioned. You build, know, oh, build tools for Visual Studio. Ah! Yeah. Thank you, Bob. This is <laughs> the, this is the new... His. Yes. yes. Very good. Well, no, it's Visual Studio. This is the new Visual Studio Sorry. SKU. There's. Right. That lacks an IDE, but yeah. otherwise installs all of your, you know, C Sharp and C++ um, MS build stuff. libraries and SDKs and whatnot. But then he says his local machine fails the same error. Because he didn't install Votive. Oh, because he didn't install Votive. Right. Okay, cool. This is the bug that I needed. Um, yep. This is the bug that MS build changed behavior. We have a question out to them what the way, way to fix it is and that. So, yeah, give this to me. Put it in 3.11. I'm tracking down the solution. Just for those of you playing along at home, the best solution we have at this point is 
we have to change the way that we import the Wix tool set because MS Build 15 will do the fallback to looking at the the standard location of installing MS Build targets, but only um, if you pass the MS Build extension paths, whatever it is, property directly to the import call. And we don't do that because we allow you to override the location. If you've ever looked at your Wix prod, you'll see the Wix targets path, I think is the variable name, that gets passed to the import. And that apparently prevents MS Build from working correctly. So the current plan is to change the import such that we do an import with the MS Build extensions path if Wix target path is not defined. And if Wix target path is defined, we'll have another import that uses that. The problem is that you have to manually update your Wix proj to take advantage of that, and so everybody's Wix proj is wrong, unless for some reason you did this a long time ago. Um, it's bad. Um, and so I don't know. Well, we're going to keep the same behavior. that You could override the targets, John. We just need to change the change it so we pass the correct variable down to MS build 15 for this to work. And then it's going to be a whole lot of, every time you hit this issue, please read this page that tells you what to do to your project. Um, and we'll update the votive templates so that they um, so that they uh, use this new pattern instead of the old pattern and try to avoid the whole problem. Anyway, um, fun and games. This is one of those things that we're going to be able to solve. Well, we'll be able to clean up a little bit in MS Build or in, yeah, in Wix 314. We'll get a little bit error, better error message because we will fix the, the project, the targets file, a lot. Anyway, that's the story behind this thing. Not fun. Continued breakage of Visual Studio 2017 design decisions. All right, website content is duplicated in IS Manager. They didn't fill out the template at all correctly, and they have this blob of, please answer these answers. They didn't. They gave us an image and code. I suggest we just close this and say, go get support somewhere else. It is a support question anyway, I think. So Yeah, great. Done. I don't really want to deal with that. All right. I want to take a quick look at these things in R3.5, or R3.11 release. Whoa. Look at all of that. At least I don't have the most bugs this time. <laughs> Although I take that back because I think Sean's already fixed this one. So he only has two, and that one's a lot easier than any of my bugs. Um. <laughs> all righty then. So... This is what we're looking at 311. Uh, the three of us standing here in front of you talking on the call are the ones that own all these issues, so I guess we're going to get them fixed. Um, I'll try to do that. Mine are both in Votive. Your guys' are actually in the tools themselves. Um, so... Um, Keep that in mind, because I'm going to ask a little bit when we want to do the next RC build. All right? So you guys have time to think about that. <coughs> Moving on to pull requests. <sighs> this is basically triage at this point. We need to decide which of these we're taking. Um, I think we've decided we're not taking this um, race condition here, correct? No. Right? Correct. Okay. Um, the alt background redraw thing. Correct not taking it. I, I put, everything should be marked as 311. But from, sorry, all the old ones should have been marked 311. Um, uh, I don't think we've discussed. Um, these are all no, 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 not marked. These are not marked 311. So Sorry, they're correct, they're not. I don't know how to mark them. We could add some no. labels, I suppose. No, we're going to close them because they're not going to 314. Uh, right. Um, no, I don't think we should close them quite yet unless we come up with a label that makes them easy to find. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, they're, 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 they're reference pull requests. Got it. Correct. We won't actually accept them, but you know, they okay, contain useful fine. information. So you want to be able to tag them so you can find them in the future. Correct. Same with this DPI thing. We're not taking that 311, right? Right. All right. The wrong IIS binding. Is this coming in 311? And there's already a fix for four as well. Oh, this. I just don't know. It's 
needs a lot more. I think that's where we ended up. We didn't. I don't think that can come with 311. Sure. That's going to take a lot more testing, and I just don't think it's going to. Okay. Make it. Okay. I'm, it's I'm just, fine with that. It's just. But there's one in four, so we'll, we'll do the same thing. Make sure there's one in four. If there's one in four, we'll kill it. Call the one in four that declare. Um, this is a bug fix for one of the things that Sean has open already, so we're going to take that. Um, this is a fix from Heath to update his NuGet packages to RTM, which is fine. Um, I think we should take that. And then we have a feature. Yep. Are we taking this feature? Adding the logging base folder to bundle in 3.11. We don't have a bug tracking it, so we haven't talked about it. Um, or we do have a bug. Maybe there's probably a feature request out there somewhere about this. Um, do we are we taking this to 311 I'd like to see it it's bigger than I'd like so you're saying maybe so you want to tag us 311 and investigate it no because I've invested I mean I've looked at the code it's you know um And I didn't know I was going to have to answer this. Um, well, I, we could come back to it later. It's just we need to talk about no, what we're releasing. I, I, we can't. If we're going to take it, we need to take it now or not at all. Yeah, that's kind of uh, where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I think it's too late. I mean, it came in, it, it came in after the RC. Okay. Even. So uh, we need to tag it as well to make sure it gets over to 4.0, because it's probably correct. what we want, but we want it 4.0. Yep. All right. I'm all for that. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. I, I was wait. I heard Sean come on because he has that distinctive little metallic buzz, and I was like, "But, but he didn't." He said, "Cool." <laughs> All right. We're done. We're triaged. So that says that we're not taking any of these that aren't a fix for a thing we already have, or just an update to RTW, which is probably a good thing. No reason for us to continue doing that. Um. I will, with the phrases, clean sheet it after that. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so that just means we have these bugs to get fixes for. As I noted, mine are both in Votive. So one of the cool things about Votive is that it's going to be happening in its own, it happens on its own time now, which is really nice. Um, but I will still get it, the 2017 fixes done in the 3.11 announcement time period, because uh, that's what we're doing here. Um, you guys. So, um, what are we thinking about next build for 3.11? I only have one thing, and it's mostly done. I have to test it. Um, I'm looking for a build date. When do you guys want me? Kind of busy. I'm, I'm, I'm working toward it. I'm showing you my thought process. Yes. Um, I, I can't promise to have it before the weekend. I wish I could say it would be done sooner. Sean? I'll try to finish this weekend. All right, so that says we're doing a build Monday. Or we'll, we'll I mean, assuming something happens, we'll do a build Monday. Okay. About that? Not before, yep. Yeah, not before Monday. All right, so we're not going to see any of these things get fixed this week. Okay. All right, so with that in mind, look at the segue. Boom! Um, 3.11 release date. So next build 3.11 after the RC would be the 20th, maybe the 21st. That's two weeks after the RC release, you know. So Monday or Tuesday means, you know, a week-ish after, or two weeks after the RC. The, the dream was that we would release Wix 3.11 on April 1st, which is actually really nice. It's a Saturday. I would like that. Gives me time to, you know, do all the stuff without having it crunched with all the other work I have to do during the middle of the day, but um, is that realistic? That basically gives us mm, almost eh, almost two weeks again if we get mm -hmm. the build out on Monday-ish. It gives us another two weeks to see what happens <sighs> for April 1st. Um, another alternative is we could push back and you know do it. We've done this before. We've declared um, tax day a holiday. Um, if we want to set the holidays, you know, we can always abandon that too. Um, we could also do May Day. 
Um, thoughts? What do people think? Mayday? Gonna slip it a month? Probably not a bad idea, right? Just to get a few more installs. Meaning that we're going to have another declared release candidate. Um, that's a good point. When would you want? Yeah, well, May Day is like we could do Tax Day. That's you know just adds two more weeks. Well, well all right, sorry. Let's back up. My, if your intent is to get more eyes on another bill, then we have to. We should know. do an, like I guess what I, I we should do in our all right. We should take all these bug fixes. And then do an RC2. Right. And we could do that on Tuesday, maybe, right? Like if all went well, sure. do it on sure. Tuesday. That would be pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So we need to do an RC2 anyway. Bob's right. We should do an RC2 anyway. An RC2 two weeks after RC1, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. um, maybe get another bump, get everybody trying again, especially if you're stuck on... on I don't know if we'll have any Visual Studio 2017 changes, but that's okay. Um, sorry, in the core tool set, the Votive will have an update. So we'll get the right. Votive published on that date as well. All right, so I like this. So what we're talking about is an RC2. All right, so we're talking about an RC2 on the 21st, so a week from today. Um, that's what we're shooting for, so let's try to get those bugs in, help to get those bugs in, get those things going kind of stuff, yay. Um, and then how about on the 28th, we discuss the release date again, based on the feedback we get from RC2. Sure. Yep. I kind of yep. like this TikTok, you know, so, you know, as they used to say, do the release. A week later, we talk about it in the meeting. So we did RC1 last week, talk about it this week. Do an RC2 next week, talk about it on the 28th. And then we can make a decision about, hey, no, no bugs, everything went out, we got some numbers, looks good. So let's release on April 1st or April 15th or May Day. Yeah? That works. All right. Yep. I like that plan. That actually sounds like we have an organized thought process behind what we're doing. <laughs> As opposed to... So, so we're fooling everybody. It. Oh, come on. This is the way it works for everybody. Everybody sits around and kind of goes, well, what are we doing? And then you put this nice... Then you put together a nice story that's easy to tell. And when you tell the story, everybody thinks that it was, you know, well thought out from the beginning and this is exactly what we plan to do, which of course is not at all uh, the way it works in reality. So that works out a lot better if you don't broadcast it on YouTube. Um, <laughs> that's right. But I, I make no, no pretenses that it is. I'm just saying that I know this is exactly the same way it works everywhere else. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so all we're doing here is truth. And those of you that were wondering, yeah, I know this is the way it is. This is I, I'm trying to dispel the imposters um, syndrome, you know, where yeah. you're like, gosh, our releases are kind of like arbitrary. And like, yeah, no, you're not alone. Arbitrary they are. All right, I like that plan. RC2 on the 21st. You heard it here first. Of course you heard it here first. All right, questions, comments, things people want to talk about. We have a Gerhard hanging out the whole time. I think he was here because he wanted to make sure that his bug got fixed, which I totally understand. Um... <laughs> And and so I hopefully we've been halfway entertaining that maybe he'll come back and hang out with us again and then from there maybe we'll see bug fixes which is of course is the progression that we took Sean and John and Jacob and John along um, and now they're plus ones just the John for me I rely on him as far as plus one right plus one John um, anything else people want to talk about yeah count on John. I don't know how I got to John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith, which I got to close with John Jacob Sean Hall. I didn't have the the ending. Oh, but I could do it with ooh John Jacob Jingleheimer, John Jacob Sean Hall Gerhard. Almost not quite Smith. Anyway, Rob's um, had a busy month. In case you can't tell, I am slightly punchy and I am not getting a lot of sleep. So it's, I, we have so many things going on. Never mind that we put this whole Visual Studio 2017 release on top of everything, and then they went off and made the world extremely difficult on us. I've, I've crossed over from angry to just silly. Um, so anyway, anything else people want to talk about? 
Do we want to discuss the WPF UI changes here? Um, I'm fine with that. If people want to talk about it, we have a few minutes. You know, it's, it's been an hour, but hang out a little bit. So those of you that wanted to drop off, now be a fine time. This is when I'd say have a good week. We'll see you on the RC next week, but we're going to hang out and talk about the UI a little bit. Hopefully we can come to something quick. Uh, I think the first question is whether the UI should try to accommodate all the links for all the Visual Studios or the link to the web page that says here's where you can get the Visual Studios. Um, yeah, we need a landing page. All right. I, I think a landing page may turn out to be a useful thing in general. Well, I think it, it yeah, I think we, we should have one anyway, and um, I don't want us to get into having to detect the different versions of Visual Studio to decide which links need to be shown. Yeah, okay. We do have that work that Heath did to to create the detection properties. So yep. theoretically, of course, those are detection properties in MSI and help custom us. actions, so they're not really helpful for the bundle UI. So, um, yeah, my landing page is much better. And I think we just we should always show it. You know, let's not bother trying to detect, even if they have any version of Visual Studio. Don't even bother. So change the complete button into a get Visual Studio and and more button, which really just takes uh, you to this landing page where we could put Visual Studio and more on it. Uh, yeah, I'm not thrilled with that. Um, it's already uh, it's it's very uh, not. Uh, fine, it's it's really subtle. How do you tell that you're done? Well, what was a progress bar that was flashing stuff is oh, now... It, it should say do. done, big bold type, and then go here to get more stuff. I don't care. It it, it doesn't. Just no, I, but we're talking about changing it. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Whatever. I don't know that the window should change size, and I'm not really big on having it pop up another window. That's all I'm. No, saying. no, no, no. I wasn't so, suggesting that. I, sorry. I guess what I'm saying is, the 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 current Brady Bunch model there doesn't really lend itself to, you know, showing a dramatically different thing. Everything's pretty much just you know a button with some text. Right, but that's why I was saying it could, because right now the the center button turns into complete. I think that's what it says at the end, right? I think so, yeah. And then you have to click the exit button because clicking the complete button doesn't do anything. Right. Even though it is a button. But yes. Whatever. So I'm just saying instead <laughs> it could turn into whatever, done, 24 point success, whatever whatever looks good, and more text that says, you know, click here, click this thing to go get more stuff or click exit and exit. You know, I mean, whatever. It seemed like a reasonable place. We have a button there. It seems like a reasonable thing to click on again at the end. To close this window and launch the web sure. page to the landing page. That's all I was saying. Without having to okay. add another button or otherwise. Okay. I, I don't think we have a whole lot of space in that button, but yeah. yeah. The complete button? It's the big wide one in the middle. Yeah. It's, it's the biggest button on a you know, very small window. It's... Oh, okay. I think it was three tiles big. That's huge. <laughs> Is it? Well, three tiles wide. Three tiles wide. Yes, three tiles wide, one wide tile tall. Other thought? Any, everybody else is sitting around just listening to us babble. The, probably the people, two people with the worst UI designs. That's not fair. Bob's was worth mine, but... Um, <laughs> 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 I've done some kick-ass bundle UIs. Uh, that's true, but usually because you had a... <laughs> <laughs> designer that fed you the UI. Um, well, they fed me graphics. Yeah. I'm the one who put them in the right spot, so hey. I just look better than that. I can type the XY coordinates. Um, well, not the first time, but. <laughs> uh, thoughts, people? Sean? <laughs> You're the one that signed up for actually doing this. I was also thinking that wouldn't be a whole lot of work of changing an existing button to something else that was a launch web browser and go away thing, but... Yeah, that sounds easy, because we already have, like, a label there to show the MSI um, status. Right? Like, as the MSI is installing, it's flashing by with all the... 
Yeah, I, I was just thinking you could just change the whole, yeah, change the text or whatever. Yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> you could change the whole tile or whatever you want to do, yeah. And it's a clickable button, so you don't have to change that. You just have to change this target at the end. So, yeah, I like the idea of click here to go get, you know, Visual Studios and more, right? And then, um, I guess, on the landing page, do we want to just list the Visual Studios, or do we want to list the build tools, too? I'm thinking we might just list, you know, everything you can get for Wix, which at this point is the Visual Studios and the build tools. Oh, yeah. No, I think that's fine. Okay. And the idea you being that if you get there, you'd, you'd know I just installed the build tools, so I don't have to go. So I don't need those, yeah. Right. <laughs> and we could then point the... Um, the V6 install may have a place where we could click in there to take you to the landing page as well. Because right now it takes you to the um, downloads page, which isn't bad, but... So, well, worst comes to yeah, worst, we could take yeah. you to the downloads page. Right. Because I mean, right. it has all the information you need uh, about yeah. the motive releases now. Is this just a behavior change? Uh, yeah, we're talking about making it so the complete button or something like that, clicks in. No, the idea being when you when you get to the end of the install, instead of saying complete, it tells you, hey, you might want the Visual Studio tools. Click here to go get them, which then closes that window and launches the web browser to a page that says, here's where you can get the Visual Studio tools. <laughs> That'd be it. That's all it does. And then you can then click from there and go, oh, yeah, I need Visual Studio 2015 click on that and get your tools. Because what the issue that Bob brought up in the issue is that um, our discoverability on, hey, you just installed 3.11, you don't have Visual Studio anymore, is going to surprise a lot of people that haven't been along for the ride. Well, I mean, we got that bug, the last bug minus one that we looked at. So, something. Sean, you might do the minimum amount of work. Well, actually, if you're just going to use that button, changing the code to do that, it's no big deal. And then we'll probably can poke to death the a screenshot of what it looks like. That's probably the easiest thing is sending Wix devs, you know, screenshots, and then people can throw in their two cents because it's really easy to throw in opinions about UI. We're probably really good about that. I think <laughs> Phil lived through that <laughs> on, the, on the new UI there. So, and then we'll need to look at how to do update that UI uh, to talk about Visual Studio as well. Um, Just throw a link at the bottom. Yeah, uh, something like that. So, all right. Well, I think that's the design or something to that effect. And Sean will send us a screenshot or something, and we'll all say that it's not good enough and make him change it because that's always what happens on the first round of UI. Pretty much. Yeah. And always, always, always. It's one of the things I dislike about UI most. It's never good enough. Um, all right. On that note, I think we're done. Uh, RC next week. RC2 next week, which will be exciting. Uh, 3.14 coming either late April or early May. Um, and... Uh, then 4.0 is Focus, which will actually be really, really nice. All right, well, until next time, you guys take it easy. Later. Bye.